I welcome you all for our course physics and in this session we are going to discuss about laser and optical fibers. Myself, Dr. Sandeep Desai, Department of Basic Science and Humanities, CADIS College of Engineering, Kolhapur. First of all, we are going to discuss in detail about the laser. Laser is an acronym of light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So, this is the full form of laser. To understand this in detail, we first should know that what is light. Light is an electromagnetic wave. What is electromagnetic wave? Electromagnetic waves are the uh, vibrations or variations of electric and magnetic field as you see in the figure. Now, what is about wave? When wave is there, wave has certain characteristics and depending on those characteristics, its properties would be get changed. Like here, as you see in the full form of laser, here we have light amplification. Now, what is amplification actually means? You see that amplification is something by this word we get to know that is related with amplitude. What is amplitude? Okay. So, in this wave, this maximum displacement from mean position, this is what we are called as amplitude. And for any wave, the intensity of that wave is directly proportional to amplitude square we have. It means that when amplitude is more, the intensity will be more as there is a direct proportion. So, understand what is amplification? Amplification is simply means increasing the amplitude of wave by certain value. And how we can increase it? There are number of ways to increase that. Particularly in case of laser, as the full form suggests that light is here amplified and this amplification of light that we are going to do it by stimulated emission of radiation. So, this stimulated emission of radiation we can say is the basic principle for the generation of laser. So, to understand now this stimulated emission of radiation, we must understood first basic interaction of radiation with matter. What is interaction? Interaction means if there is give and take relation like that we have. So, that is interaction. Radiation, radiation is uh, energy, energy of light, energy of photons and that all of us should know that energy is given by H nu where H is Planck's constant and nu is the frequency. So, how this energy interacted with the matter? Now, here matter by that way uh, we can consider as atom, molecule, electron, whatever it is. Okay? So, that we can consider as a matter. So, first way of interaction we have that is absorption. What is absorption? So, that now we are going to discuss. So, to understand this absorption, let me consider here two energy levels, E1 as a ground energy level, E2 as excited or higher energy level. Generally, it is observed that atoms are present in their ground energy level and they are stable at the ground energy level, that is a stable energy level. Now, if a photon or radiation of energy H nu incident on this atom, which is uh, stable here, let us say A, the energy of this radiation that is absorbed by this atom. So, what will happen? By absorbing this energy, this atom that transited to excited or higher energy level. And when it get excited to this higher energy level, at that energy level, you find that it becomes unstable. So, this process of absorption of energy of photon radiation and by absorbing the energy of this radiation when atoms are excited and becomes unstable. So, that process we call it as absorption. Let us indicate that unstable atom as A star. So, this process even I can represent in form of equation as A initially where my atom was in stable state, it absorbs energy of radiation H nu and by absorbing this energy, it is get excited and there it becomes unstable. 
So, very easily by this equation also we can understood how this interaction of radiation takes place with the matter. Next kind of interaction we have that is spontaneous emission of radiation. So, by this word spontaneous, can you get or can you have certain idea what we mean by spontaneous? Think about it. Yes. So, spontaneous, the word spontaneous that means by itself, by its own, without any external agency or motivation or impetus. So, that is spontaneous. And next to that you see what we are mentioned, spontaneous emission of radiation, means there is a emission of energy, emission of photons that too takes place and that should happen spontaneously. So, by this word itself, we can able to judge that how this interaction that too be takes place. So, again we will understand that by using this two energy level diagram. Let us say that the atoms those are absorb energy and get excited to excited energy level. Now, in this excited energy level or higher energy level, as I just told you before that these atoms are highly unstable. They may not stay here for very long time. It is their general tendency and this kind of tendency that is get applied to everyone. In our life also we want to be become stable, we do not want to be remain in unstable state. So, atoms in this excited state, you see their lifetime is very very small of the order of 10 raise to minus 8, minus 9 seconds. So, that is too too small. So, atoms as they may not live in this excited state for very long time, spontaneously by themselves, they actually emit that extra energy whatever they have in the energy level E2 in form of photons means here they emit energy in form of photons radiation and get down to this uh, lower energy level here and become stable. Are you get my point? So, let me explain once again. So, what happens here? Atoms from this excited energy level, they are transited to ground or stable energy level and in doing so, it emit a photon of energy H nu. So, as this thing happens by themselves, by itself, so we call this phenomena as spontaneous emission of radiation. In form of equation, I can represent it as A star, that is my unstable atom, it get transited to stable state, ground state and in doing so, it emit energy of, in form of radiation photon H nu. Now, here there is a question why not spontaneous emission becomes the basic principle or it may not able to produce an amplified light or intense light or laser light. Why it is so? Because this spontaneous emission is a random process. Okay? The first thing you remember that this spontaneous emission is a random process we have. Because there is no such uh, what we say a periodically emitted photons that we get atoms by themselves as they get down to the ground state. So, there is no uh, time uh, relation or phase relation between the emission which is emitted out of this transition and that is why whenever this atom get fall to the ground state or any intermediate state and all that. So, that time the radiations which are emitted they have different different frequencies. So, when they mix they mix destructively and that is why they may not able to produce the intense or amplified light. So, remember spontaneous emission is a random process. It may not able to produce an amplified light and that is why it is not a basic principle for the formation of laser. Now, we come to the very important third interaction of radiation with matter that is stimulated emission of radiation. So, again here you see emission of radiation that means definitely the atom from excited state it should fall to the ground state or lower state because we want to get emission of radiation right. So, for getting emission of radiation must be the transition should take place from higher to lower state that is the first thing remember and the word stimulated now here the point comes stimulated what do you mean by stimulated what is stimulation. So, stimulation 
it means giving certain external energy, some motivation, some impedance, force that we can say. And because of that, if there is an emission of radiation takes place, then that process we call it as stimulated emission of radiation. So, let us understood that again by using two energy level diagram. So, let us the consider as usual E1 as a lower energy level, E2 as higher energy level. And as I said that we want to get emission of radiation, so atoms should be fall from higher to lower energy state. Let us show like this. So, atoms here in this excited level, you know that those are highly unstable. They may do spontaneous emission as well, but stimulative emission, if you want to get, what you have to do? You have to stimulate these excited state atoms by giving external energy to do the lower energy state transition so that there is an emission of radiation takes place. And in doing so, what happens as this photon stimulate this atom to do the lower energy state transition because it lose energy in form of photon, we get a one photon and along with that the photon which stimulate this atom to do the lower energy state transition that also come along with it. Now, it may happen if the energy of this incident photon and energy between these two state those are same. Energies are same that means their frequencies are same and if their frequencies are same definitely they will interfere constructively. So, the amplitude of their resultant that increases means there is amplification takes place. If an individual wave has uh, this much amplitude because of two as they are constructively, okay, you know that in constructive interference amplitude increases. So, here amplitude increases. Now, does only this two will able to form a laser? No. Now, this two will do what? They again stimulate to more this excited state atom to do the lower energy state transition. So, this two along with the two more photons which are emitted because of this transition. So, total four photons will be get emitted. Four may do further again stimulated emission. Four becomes eight, eight becomes sixteen and this number goes on increasing. And as this number goes on increasing, the every step in every step the amplitude of that wave increases, increases and so we get an amplified light. So, that is why you see in full form of laser, okay, we say laser is light amplification and this amplification is done by stimulated emission of radiation. So, stimulated emission here we can show uh, by formula again as usual A star that is my unstable atom which is here we have in excited state. A photon of uh, energy same as that of difference in these two energy levels strike or motivate or we can say stimulate this excited atom to do the lower energy state transition where it becomes stable. And in doing so, this photon plus because of this transition here one photon, so total two photons those are get emitted. This process is a basic principle of laser as it amplify able to amplify the light. It is a control process we have, we can able to control this process. If you want to increase the amplitude or intensity of light, that is possible. Okay, so, it is a control process we have. So, I hope that you understood now these three basic interaction of radiation with matter. And now, there is a question for you that here enumerate certain differences between a spontaneous emission of radiation and stimulated emission of radiation. Thank you.